हेलो फ्रेंड्स वेलकम टू इंजीनियरिंग ट्यूटोरियल सो सो फार वी हैव बीन डिस्कसिंग वेरियस कॉन्सेप्ट्स रिलेटेड टू द मैकेनिकल प्रॉपर्टीज ऑफ मटेरियल्स एंड इन द प्रीवियस वीडियोस वी हैव डिस्कस्ड अबाउट द वेरियस काइंड्स ऑफ टेस्टिंग दैट आर डन टू एग्जामिन द वेरियस मैकेनिकल प्रॉपर्टीज सच एज टफनेस फॉर टफनेस इम्पैक्ट टेस्टिंग हार्डनेस टेस्टिंग to test the various mechanical properties of materials for their appropriate selection uh, for a specific task or purpose now uh, in this video we are going to discuss about another important aspect which is related to the mechanical properties of material which is failure or fracture okay so we'll discuss that now uh all the mechanical properties so far which we have discussed they are in one way or the other related to two important things okay stress and strain okay everything that we have discussed every mechanical property which we have discussed it is one way or the other related to stress and strain okay so the load applied or the pressure which is applied on a material during any mechanical operation that is called as stress and the resultant change in the length and cross sectional area the deformation that happens that is called as strain and sometimes because of extreme stress the material undergoes uh, a lot of deformation and it breaks or disintegrates or it fractures that is called as fracture so the failure of engineering materials it is one of the most important and practical aspects when it comes to their selection for a particular uh, task for a particular purpose so all these things toughness hardness uh, uh, tensile test all of these testing is done and along with that failure tests okay they are also performed to test the limit of the engineering material how much stress it can withstand without undergoing any disintegration or fracture so for the design from the design development and production point of view this thing has to be taken into consideration it is taken very seriously okay the failure aspect or fracture of engineering materials okay so we can define failure of engineering material as the inability of that component or that part to perform the required function or operation which is for the purpose of which it is designed to meet or to satisfy the specific operational criteria operational specifications okay even if it is not damaged if it is failing to achieve the desired results then also it is it is it is defined or it is classified under failure and to perform the specific task in a reliable manner okay so these are the ways in which we can define failure of a material so everything uh, that is uh, you know uh, exposed to stress will undergo strain and when it uh, extreme stress uh, is uh, it is the material is subjected to extreme stress it undergoes fracture so fracture in materials is basically it is the process of uh, creation of new surfaces on the material or the component okay which leads to uh, separation of that material the, the intact material in two or more parts okay so basically fracture happens in two ways it is of two types ductile and brittle fracture so both ductile and brittle fracture is in one way or the other related to the stress strain curve 
okay so here uh, the elastic and plastic deformation will come into play so when stress is applied on the material it undergoes strain and that results in deformation so if the deformation is reversible it is called as elastic deformation and if it is re irreversible it is called as plastic deformation so uh, the stress strain curve for a particular material it can take different shapes and there are various points on the stress strain curve and depending on the nature of the material whether it is a ductile or brittle material it will pass through these points now some of the materials they may not even cross the the proportionality limit after that they may not cross all of these points they may undergo fracture before that okay for example one of the materials may reach up to point n and then it will undergo fracture one of them may reach up to point q then it will undergo fracture one of them will reach up to r then it will undergo fracture other one will be uh, it will reach up to point s then will be then it will undergo fracture so depending on how much stress they can withstand and without any failure or fracture without complete disintegration that explains the ductile or brittle nature of materials so fracture is of two types as i said ductile fracture it occurs after extensive plastic deformation okay so ductile nature material are those in which the area under the stress strain curve is very high it means it can withstand more stress and undergoes more strain the typical nature of a stress strain curve for a ductile material is like this see it can withstand more stress and undergoes more strain as a result the stress strain curve has higher area so it has very slow crack propagation okay the cracks that happen because of the stress applied the propagation the movement of the cra uh, cracks the spreading of the cracks it is very slow and as a result it undergoes fracture over a period of time not it is not sudden it happens gradually steadily and then fracture happens up at this point okay at this point so it can withstand more stress undergoes more strain it is not sudden the fracture mechanism is not sudden it's gradual it is slow so that is ductile fracture whereas brittle fracture brittle materials are those in which the fracture happens suddenly unexpectedly okay and it cannot withstand more stress and it does not undergo more strain fracture happens much before okay so a typical nature of a brittle material is like this see it, it the strain values here undergone by the brittle material it is very less it undergoes fracture it breaks or disintegrates at much lower values of strain okay but as compared to this it undergoes more strain the ductile material undergoes more strain so here the area under the stress strain curve is less so we can say that the ductile and brittle nature of materials can be inferred from the area under the stress strain curve so if the area under the stress strain curve is more for a material then it is ductile in nature more the area more the ductility and if the area is less it is more on the brittle side okay so in brittle material the fracture happens suddenly unexpectedly and it has rapid crack propagation whereas in ductile fracture it is slow crack propagation okay so why uh, the nature of fracture and uh, all of this has to be studied now it is very important to know how much a material can uh, tolerate stress before it undergoes fracture what is the lifetime or what is we can say in one way or the other we can say what is the in in a in a way we are specifying the expiry date of the material how much can we use it so for that an engineer before uh, you know selection selecting a particular material for a particular manufacturing purpose he or she has to be completely familiar with the concept of fracture for that particular material the fracture mechanism okay 
the failure of materials and their nature and behavior whether it is coming in the ductile category or brittle category and depending on that the selection of engineering the material for a specific task has to be done and after the fracture happens sufficient data and information has to be extracted from that in order to understand the reason why the failure or fracture has happened the causes of failure and then to take the necessary preventive or precautionary measures to correct the mistakes so that is why the study of fracture or failure mechanism in materials it is very important from the engineering point of view okay so here we have discussed an important aspect of uh, the selection of engineering materials from the mechanical properties point of view which is fracture or failure in materials okay so i hope you like this video and please subscribe my channel engineering tutorial for more such videos related to engineering science and technology have a great day thank you very much